Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and today we have some huge news coming out of Marvel from their official website. And the motorcycle christens this video already, guys. It appears that we're getting a bigger update than we initially planned for or expected for Spider-Man Homecoming. Now, everybody knows that movie is coming out. We've seen all the hype surrounding the trailers on May, maybe a rework for Iron Man. But we weren't expecting a whole lot from the update. We were expecting, yeah, probably a new uniform for Spider-Man, maybe a rework, uh, maybe, you know, Vulture as a villain, maybe even uh, Electro or Shocker or someone like that. But holy shit, boys, we are getting the Sinister Six. And I could not be happier to say those words unironically. This kind of feels like a mini version of the X-Men update. I didn't think we would actually see so many motorcycles and so many villains coming to the game at one point. So that's the, the first point I wanna make about this, this news, about this potential update. We're getting a lot of villains, and that's a really good thing for this game because this game does lack villains, and it's something that I really want to see more of, and I wanna see more parity between heroes and villains because I think villains are so cool, and Marvel has some really awesome ones, and especially Spider-Man. Guys, the Sinister Six are amazing. So what exactly are we getting, guys? Let's. Uh, break it down specifically as part of this post on their website where they advertise all these different updates for different Marvel games like Puzzle Quest, Contest of Champions, uh, and also Marvel Future Fight. We are getting specifically the Sinister Six here with Sandman, Lizard, Craven, Rhino, Mysterio, and the Vulture. So that is six, boys. Six new villains. In addition, guys, as you've seen from the thumbnail already, we are apparently getting a new uniform for Spider-Man. It's his homemade spider costume, kind of Hobo Spidey, as Reddit has already christened. And I like that name, so bring on some Hobo Spidey. Bring on some Hobo Fist-esque reworks. If Spider-Man ends up jumping in power as much as Iron Fist did when he got his Netflix uniform, we're going to see a whole new speed meta, boys. And I, for one, can say I am super, super excited about that. Diving in a little bit further into the text from Marvel's website, they talked to uh, the chief global officer over at Netmarble Games, and he gave us a few more tidbits, a few more hints as to what we can expect. He said players will be able to take on and play as or against Spider-Man and take part in a quest where the hero battles it out while earning a new quest pack. So a new quest pack hints at a special mission because we know the quest pack was introduced with the Dormammu update where we got the uh, War of Kings quest pack that gives you a tier 2 ticket and we got the Dormammu quest pack which gives you, well, Dormammu amongst among a bunch of other rewards. Now there's two things I also want to point out. For one, we are getting six villains. Five plus one is the typical number for special missions. You have five missions, one for each of the new characters and the sixth character or the sixth motorcycle in this case is going to be the shifter who only appears intermittently and is kind of like a semi or a soft paywall character so think the inhumans update i think that this sinister six update will be very similar to the inhumans update we might get some new backgrounds uh, for the game modes we're going to get five new missions so instead of the five inhumans we're going to get five of the six sinisters and then the sixth sinister six will be that inferno or gwenpool type shifter the other thing I wanted to point out very quickly is that there's actually a spelling mistake or an error in the text. It says here uh, where the hero battles it out with his while earning a new quest pack. Now, I'm not pointing it out to try and say that there is an error that should be fixed, but I am questioning whether or not there was some extra text that was supposed to be there with his what, with his who. And it was omitted because it revealed too much of the upcoming update. So I don't mean to start a huge rumor or a tinfoil hat conspiracy kind of thing because I know you guys love the drama, but imagine if there's a seventh character, guys, with his what? Who could it be, guys? With Uncle Ben? No, seriously. Um, that's just That was just something that I saw um, on the take, and I thought it'd be interesting to sh share with you guys. The other implication that this has, if they are indeed special missions, is what happens to the existing special missions. Because when we got the Inhuman special missions, when we had the new Avenger special missions, we had to say goodbye to the old uh, missions for the Ant-Man movie. I think it actually moved over with the new Avengers missions, but 
we may see the same kind of thing happen. If you're not familiar, when the new Avengers missions came in and they superseded or they took over for the Ant-Man movie uh, special missions, all of those shifters, or at least most of them, got moved over into Dimension Rifts. And that's why now you can open up Dimension Rifts for Ant-Man, Yellow Jacket, Wasp, all those characters got moved over and bumped over into those Dimension Rifts. So it's possible that we'll be able to open White Tiger, Wiccan, uh, etc. Those new Avengers Dimension Rifts, Hulkling Dimension Rifts, um, and then we'll have the um, Inhuman special uh, missions with those quest packs, and then this new Sinister Six quest pack. I don't think it's going to be an epic quest for those of you who are wondering, because we just had one, and it seems like Netmarble wants to release a new epic quest maybe once every eight months, if we judge by the cycle from Doctor Strange now to Wolverine. And I think there's going to be a more kind of epic feel to these missions. That's why they're called epic missions. So I don't think it's time yet to introduce another one. I also don't think it's going to be as simple as an event mission. I don't think it's going to enhance on the story because where the story leaves off at the end of chapter 12 and where it gets hints from in regards to the ultimates with Black Panther in the, in this, the new epic quest missions really doesn't hint towards this update with Sinister Six. So they don't really fit anywhere else in the game other than kind of their own world that they can exist in for these special missions, that, which are kind of like an offshoot or a branching off of the main story and the main kind of quest lines that we have. Now, the final thing I want to talk about with you guys, and probably the most important thing, is the characters, guys. We're getting at least six new villains, which is fantastic. If you're not realizing it already, guys, Shadowland is very heavy on the requirements for villains, and until now, we've still been recommending that people use Black Order characters to make up for those gaps in their roster. We do have a lot of new villains and a lot of good ones like uh, Maximus and Enchantress and Baron Mordo and others, but it's always nice to get more. Currently, about close to 70% of the roster in the game is hero based so we don't have a lot of villains and more importantly we don't have a lot of villains who actually deal more damage to superheroes right now only malekith and red skull come to mind for me who actually deal increased damage to heroes kind of like ghost rider does to villains and miles morales does to villains as well so i would really like to see some tier 2 passives from some of these villains that deal more damage to heroes so that we can get more of a counterplay between the meta heroes in the game, which kind of dominate right now. Doctor Strange, Sharon Rogers, Odin, we just got Wolverine and basically all the X-Men, Jean Grey, these are all heroes. You know, and it creates this amazing dichotomy, this amazing back and forth, because we just got, you know, six new, almost six new heroes for the X-Men. We got mostly heroes. And then we get these six new villains. Super cool. I like that counterplay. More importantly, I want to talk specifically about each character and based on their abilities in the comics right now, what we can maybe expect. I want to throw some of my opinions out there and see what sticks and what I can hang my hat on and say I was right about when we actually have the update drop on us during the live stream. So starting from the top, guys, Sandman. His character model has been in the game for a long time. We know that he can shapeshift, he can uh, control his density, kind of like Carnage, so you can expect him to move or animate similarly to our resident uh, Combat Alliance Battle Extreme boss. Um, it's also possible that they could give Sandman some kind of flight or some kind of enhanced iframes by turning into a sandstorm because he does like to do that in the comics and in the animated series. I would love to see that, it would look very cool and it would give him a super awesome AoE attack which I think is really nice. He also has earth manipulation uh, properties, so he can control the earth around him through the sand. So it's kind of like how Crystal's fifth skill works at the beginning, so he could have some kind of enhanced CC effect. There's almost a 100% chance that he will be a combat character. And every time I mention that one of these upcoming characters is probably combat, just think in your mind, there's a possibility, albeit very small, that they will be better than Carnage for Extreme Alliance Battle. And if they're free to play, and if they're not paywall, all the better for you guys who have long since hated on Carnage for being paywall and not being obtainable if you want to get a high score in Extreme Alliance Battle Combat Super Villain Day. The next one on the list, Lizard, has some properties that I didn't actually know about specifically until I looked it up. So yes, of course, he's super smart as Connor is the doctor. He can control reptiles, which means he could have like a reptilian summon. Maybe he summons Killer Croc. We get that DC reference. 
He has regenerative health, which is very cool. I don't think he's going to be as powerful as Gwenpool with the Uni or Wolverine, but he might have some kind of heal like Luke Cage, where it procs once and then it goes on cooldown for about 30 seconds. He also has very tough skin, being a lizard, so he could have super armor, he could have stun resist, he could have web resist. Do you guys like that? And then he also brings out the primal instincts in his enemies if he's fighting them. So he can kind of enrage enemies. So this is what I thought was probably the most interesting part about Lizard potentially. He could have something like fear effect on one of his skills, which is fairly run of the mill. He could have something like taunt, which is something that we don't see on many characters. We do have a couple of characters that have a buff that actually taunts the opponent, which makes them intentionally attack you. It's not really good in most game modes, but it might work in a rumble if you need it, or it might work in some kind of um, cooperative mode like World Boss Invasion. Or we could see a new mechanic altogether, like an Enrage mechanic, where it buffs the enemy's stats or buffs the enemy's attack, but it lowers their defense or it lowers some of some other stats that you can then take advantage of and uh, exploit their vulnerabilities. Again, Lizard almost 100% going to be combat, but there is a slim chance he could be a speed type character, albeit a very tanky one. Next we have Craven. Craven, one of my most favorite Sinister Six uh, villains, potentially in this game could be very cool and could bring about kind of a new sub meta if my hopes are realized. So Craven, we know is a very uh, tactical guy. He's like a tactician master. Uh, planner. He's a hunter, of course. So those kinds of qualities uh, lend themselves well to things like ignore dodge or ignore defense. So we could expect one, if not both of those. Maybe he gives that to the whole team as like a buff on his tier two. He's also a strong athlete. So we could expect maybe some all speed or maybe some reduce or remove debuff passive, kind of like Angela's Asgardian blood. I'm not sure. And then Potentially, because he's a hunter and hunters do kind of devious things, he could have poison based skills. He could have a dot damage over time, like a poison blow dart or something like a poison gas bomb or something like that. And I think that would be awesome because right now we only have Green Goblin and all those poison obelisks that people roll are going to waste. So I would love to see that. Again, Craven, like the others, is probably combat, very, very slim chance to be speed, zero chance to be blast or universal. Fourth on the list, Rhino, probably my least excited or least anticipated character from the Sinister Six. I'm not a huge Rhino fan, but I, if anybody can make Rhino good, it's Netmarble. So Rhino is basically a guy who's super strong, and then he has this super strong suit that makes him even stronger. So kind of like the Juggernaut without all of the magic and the Sidorak and stuff like that, and the voice. Anyways, Rhino has the Rhino armor, so that makes him like super impervious, super tanky, super strong. What I can kind of glean from that as far as what he'll get in the game, he could get as many as, you know, guard break immune, stun immune, snare immune, which would be really good for combat even though he's not a hero. He could also have a huge all defense buff. He could have an all resistance buff, so he could start natively with 50% resistances to all the elements which would make him potentially a counter to the likes of crystal and some of the other characters that deal heavy uh, heavy elemental damage maybe even gene gray who knows and then um, he's probably also going to be a combat character i think that one's a lock there's no way he's any other class fifth up we have mysterio probably the least um easy to, to peg down the hardest one to guess as to where he's going to land in the game he does have uh, powers of illusion and kind of hypnosis. So the illusion expert part makes me believe he'll probably have something to do with clones, perhaps. You know how Loki has his illusions, uh, Clea has hers, and stuff like that. As far as the hypnotism goes and the magician side of things for Mysterio, he could have something like a movement speed debuff or a remove buff effect. So that would remove all of the buffs on a character kind of like Doctor Strange's second skill, Demons of Denak. That would be a very powerful and very meta ability. He could have like an AoE version of that, kind of like Karnak's third skill. I think that'd be very cool. And Mysterio, I would probably guess, is going to be Blast. Very unlikely, but I guess they could make him universal. Probably no chance for him to be combat or speed, but I could be surprised. I think Mag um, Mysterio is the hardest one to guess out of the six. Finally, we have Vulture, the titular villain of the upcoming movie. 
Um, he's obviously a genius engineer, as we already know, and he can build all those wings and stuff like that. So he might have some kind of mini vulture summon because of the engineering side. He might deal extra damage to enemies that are not machine or are machine, who knows, I'm not sure. He'll also have flight, which means he'll have definitely some iframes. He probably will have some guaranteed dodge, maybe some all speed, something like that. And then finally, there's a very good chance he's going to be a speed character, which is awesome because we have very few speed villains and they're all really not good. So I would love to have a new powerful meta speed uh, character and villain. And then there's a slim chance that he's a combat character. The last thing I wanna leave you guys with is the possibility that because we have five plus one, we could see a change in the special missions where instead of having that shifter, we have one of them as a native tier two, the way Dormammu was unlocked from the quest pack. So it is possible that one of these Sinister Six will be uh, a native tier two that you have to build up with Black Antimatter and Chaos Nordstones. I don't think they're going to introduce another new material right after the X-Gene feathers and crystals that they just did for the X-Men update. So you're probably going to want to start saving your Black Antimatter and your Chaos Nordstones in the event that one of them is native tier two. There is also the smaller but possible chance that there is a seventh character that will be the native tier two hiding underneath the way that we had six Inhumans plus Dormammu. It's possible, guys, and somebody can dream. So let me know what you guys think of this super hype update. I am going to be live streaming every day leading up to the update. I am going to be doing a special 24 hour Twitch live stream on the day that Spider-Man hits. We're gonna make it very Peter Parker themed, guys. If you like Spider-Man and you like watching me play Future Fight, you should definitely check that out so I don't screw up this intro anymore. And of course, guys, if you like what you see, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Take care.